Good morning, Grace City fam. I'm Bailey, and I am so excited to be here with you today as we help strangers become friends and friends become family. Today, we start a short series called Reset. We'll talk about how sometimes it's necessary to hit the reset button when our priorities and rhythms get mixed up. If this is your first time with us today, welcome. We're glad you joined us. If you'd like to learn more about how to connect, just click the link below. We'd love to get to know you better. Also, we started our comeback here at Grace City, and over the next few weeks, we'll be taking more steps to be together here in our new location. Download our app and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay social. Okay, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we learn to live and love like Jesus. worship our king come let us bow at his feet he has done great things see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great things Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You'll be faithful forevermore. God, you do great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, yeah. You freed every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifts it high, oh God, you have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah. chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifts it high oh god you have done great things you have done great things oh god you do great
caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave and I'm not here for blessing Jesus you don't owe me anything but more than anything that you can do I just want you and I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you and I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave and I here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything but more than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else, and nothing else, and nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else, and nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else will do. I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. And nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to
Good morning, Gray City. Hey, we're excited to be back with you online. I'm with Jeremy here. Hey, guys. And we're pumped. Uh, we haven't been with you for like 10 weeks, which is crazy that we haven't been under the same roof in that amount of time. But we are working on the comeback plan in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be back together. So mark your calendars for Sunday, June 7th, and invite your friends. We're going to be back here celebrating who God is and what he's done. But if you're not ready to come back, it's okay too. No worries. We'll still have online experiences for you at 9.30 and 11 a.m. But in the meantime, today we're kicking off a brand new series called Reset. Do you remember that uh, as a kid? I don't know if you played uh, video games when you were growing up, but I definitely did. Uh, my family had, uh, you remember the old Nintendo, right? And you had to get the cartridge in just right to get the thing started. Um, you didn't have any of these wireless controllers. It was just that little cable. And um, I found uh, that those make great nunchucks when you get in a fight with your brother um, in the middle of the video game. Um, or maybe you remember uh, uh, the Konami code, that like little code that you would enter in at the beginning of some video games, and it would be like the secret to everything, working all these amazing power-ups and stuff would, would come with it. In fact, uh, take a second right now, if you're, if you're watching online, and go down in the comments. And if you remember, if you're a guy that is like Konami code, I won't put it down in the comments. I want to see if anybody actually remembers from like 30 years ago <laughs> what that code is. Um, but yeah, we used to play this thing. Uh, but the interesting, like today with video games, you have all these save slots and you can back up everything. Back in the day, you just started over. Um, and the worst part is sometimes you'd be going along and you'd realize this, this round just isn't going very well and I just need to go hit that reset button. Like I, just, I know I'm, I'm kind of far along, I've accomplished, but I just, need to, I just need to start over. And sometimes you would choose that, you would reach for it and be like, this is just not a good take. We just need to start this over. And then other times it would be like somebody would trip over a cable or mom accidentally flipped a light switch and it turned the outlet off or whatever and it just had to reset the whole thing. And even though it could be really frustrating, at the same time, you'd find that, well, I, if I have to start over, if I have to re-engage, maybe I'll do it a little bit different this time. Maybe it's an opportunity to, to this round will be better. Maybe I can step back, and now that I've got a little more knowledge and I've done this before, let's, let's try it again, but this time, maybe do this one better. And, th and that's a lot like what it is like now in this time, in this, this age. Uh, matter of fact, priorities are, are constantly changing oh, yeah. and they're, they're being reset as well. Like uh, maybe you've looked for a mask, right? So I, I figured out that there are different grades, <laughs> di different model numbers for masks. If you would have asked me a year ago uh, if I would be wearing a mask at all, I would have laughed. But now I'm literally looking online for masks to have. And, and uh, I guess the N95 is like the Lamborghini of masks. Um, I, I was looking just the other day uh, at, at some other masks too. There was this one that was a KN95. And I think there were 30 of them. It was going for $10. I was like, that's a good deal. And then realized the KN95 is an equivalent of the American 96, which is a lower <laughs> level grade of mask. And, and so I, I would have never known that. We've got uh, the need for toilet paper. It's always yeah. been essential, right? <laughs> but now it's a priority uh, and you know it's starting to get back to normal because you can actually find some in all of the stores. Uh, hand sanitizer. Over the last couple weeks getting ready for our comeback, mm -hmm. we've been looking for hand sanitizer um, and getting the pumps ready for, for the lobby and it's, it's hard to find. Um, and I think one of the reasons might be <laughs> good old Matt Colvin. Uh, if you haven't heard the story, a couple months ago, Matt Colvin and his brother, they bought out like all the hand sanitizer like 17,700, 17, yeah. right? Sanitizers for them to flip. Now think about that priority. You flipped the game and you were literally flipping hand sanitizer. Um, but they got shut down because I guess he tried to sell a bottle for $70 Crazy. online. And so he became a, a, a viral, <laughs> angry, hated villain. villain through the whole thing. Yeah. Through the whole thing. And one of America's most hated people. But it really begs the question of, of what priorities are for us now. So as we're resetting, as we're looking to re-engage and we've been kind of put in a collective global timeout, um, and as a community, as individuals, we spent so much time just stopping normal, everyday life, and we're resetting, and we're looking at, hey, what do we want to do differently or better, um, collectively as a church, but, but even personally, as we look to re-engage, and leaning into this idea of, well, what do we want to be priorities? 
Uh, what do we want to be these, these guiding principles? What's amazing is Jesus actually um, talks about this in the text. And by the way, before we even jump in, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 today. If you have your Bible, um, I'd encourage you to follow along. We'll be in Matthew 6. Um, but I want to thank you for making this time a priority. Um, there's a lot of things, honestly, you could be doing right now. Maybe not as many as normal because the parks are shut down and the, um, some of those things. But you, you, I know in this season, it would be really easy just to check out. Um, but what I've heard from so many of you, what we've seen is that you've actually made your faith a priority during this season. And um, I saw this quote from Laura Turner. Um, she's currently write a, writing a book on the cultural history of anxiety. And she was talking about how church is not always the most convenient thing, but it's still essential. It's still important. Um, it's been kind of neat to hear that this is an essential thing, mm -hmm. um, that this is an essential piece of our lives over these last few weeks of gathering together. Um, but listen to what she says. She says, this then is the beauty of the church. Not that it is perfect or convenient or that it fits easily into my life, but that without it, my life would be deficient. That was her conclusion on it. Um, so let's jump into the text. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us what those priorities, what our guiding principle, what the, the focal point of our lives should be, what we should aim for. And here's what he says, Matthew 6, And maybe you've heard this before. Um, some of you may have even learned this, memorized it as a kid. Uh, but Matthew 6, here's what it says. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Other translations say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Now that's huge because if we're honest, most of us live kind of a, a compartmentalized life, right? Like we put everything into boxes. We have our work box. We have our um, education box. We have our uh, bring our kids to dance or athletics box. We, we have our relationship box. And we're putting all of these things into different compartments and boxes. And that's how we prioritize our life. But what this text teaches us is that when we seek the kingdom of God, that flips all of that completely. It's, it's a lifestyle. And so there's the tension of, of being in this box and trying to add church as another box too. And, and we know that church isn't just a space and a place on a Sunday at 930 and 11, but we do those things naturally. And so we live a life that's not really integrated. We, we live a life of our faith, not so much integrated. Uh, it, it's, it's more of an addition mm. than an intention. And so um, this text teaches us to change that. And if we don't, we would disintegrate because of it. I love this, this uh, quote from theologian Richard Rohr that says, Christianity is a lifestyle, a way of being in the world that is simple, nonviolent, shared, and loving. However, we made it into a, an established religion and all that goes with that and avoided the lifestyle change itself. One could be warlike, greedy, racist, selfish, in vain in most of Christian history, and still believe that Jesus is one's personal Lord and Savior. The world has no time for such silliness anymore. I know those words, um, Thomas shared that quote with me the other day, and it hit me really hard. Because um, I think, and it's easy sometimes for us to see this in other people's lives, right? Um, one could be warlike, greedy, racist, selfish, and vain. But as long as you check off that box of, oh, I prayed this prayer and I believe Jesus as my personal savior and all is okay. And it's just another thing. And, and we fail to acknowledge and fail to incorporate Jesus into our life, that disintegrated feeling. And what it ends up doing is it hurts us and it hurts others. Sooner or later, it all falls apart. Um, I was thinking back, I was, um, I don't know if you've been watching a lot of TV and movies. I know I have. Um, corona has not been forgiving to my waistline by any means. Um, but we've caught up on old movies and worked our way through some series. And um, with some of these, these times as a family, we've been watching some of these old movies with our kids, too. And I was watching Mrs. Doubtfire recently. Um, I love Mrs. Doubtfire. I mean, Robin Williams is one of my favorite actors of all time. And just so funny. Still makes me laugh. Hello! as he's dressed up <laughs> as you, Vaginia Doubtfire, and, and this alter ego that he has in the mov movie. And he keeps this masquerade of trying to play multiple parts of his life, but it comes to a head um, all in this dinner scene. 
um, you may remember it, where he's running back and forth for a job application. Um, he's, get, he's in this interview um, with, with, uh, for promotion, and he's sitting here with the boss, and he's having a drink, and he's, he's trying to act one way over here, and then he quit, changes clothes, runs back over, um, goes and... Uh, uh, sabotages Pierce Brosnan's uh, meal, um, and he's sitting across from Sally. The dentures are falling off. Everything starts falling apart because mm -hmm. he's trying to live in these two worlds and keep them both going at the same time. And sooner or later, it comes to a head. Uh, Pierce Brosnan's choking over here. He runs across. Help is on the way. And runs across, dives over uh, to give him the Heimlich maneuver, and the whole thing just crashes down. And it's a funny scene. But it's also a painful scene when you start seeing all the hurt and all the damage that's been done with him trying to live this double life. Um, and even just him, and he looks at his kids, and he looks at his, at his wife that he's been separated from now and split from, and um, he, it's just this tragedy of this moment. I mean, what if you and I, what if we could live more integrated? What if we could live with integrity? If we could not be so compartmentalized, not be so broken up in lives, but if we sought God first and his kingdom first and his righteousness first. And these are the two things that Jesus gives us here to seek after. And really they're interrelated, right? You have his kingdom, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. A kingdom um, simply is talking about God's rule and reign in my life that God is the king over my life, the king over my heart, and in my world, my little world, that God reigns there, that that becomes an outpost of heaven just in my life. God rules and reigns. He is the king, and I recognize him as king over my life. In righteousness, um, you just think of rightness. It's the state of being right with God and right with others when things are the way they're supposed to be, this rightness. It's actually a judicial term. It's like, okay, everybody's settled and everybody's good. Okay, cool. This is right now. It's a, this is the way it's supposed to be. And Jesus says, seek first God's kingdom, his rule and his reign in these healthy relationships, the way he defines it with God and with others. And that's awesome. But I was talking with a friend about this the other day. And I want to quote verbatim what the, um, we were talking about this going back and forth. And they said, here's the exact quote, that sounds great, but how the hell do I pay my bills? <laughs> I mean, it was a really honest question. Yeah. And, and that's the tension, right? Is, is we're not saying that this text is teaching us that you stop working or you stop going to school or you stop going to the ball games. Those are the spaces that you're in. But the tension really is that we're supposed to bring the kingdom of God right into those everyday spaces and seeking mm. it as well in his righteousness as well too. Uh, but that's what Jesus is talking about this text. Uh, let's back up for a second. In, in Matthew 6, 19, uh, I'll go through that through 21 and then 24 too. It says something uh, to this piece of where our treasures are actually at. Um, it says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that's an important piece. Our heart is where we have our treasure and our treasure is where our heart lands. And so you can go to work, you can go to school, you can be in all of those places and still be paying the bills, but there's a difference with your heart. Uh, let me read in 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both money and God. Uh, most of our English translation, most of our modern translations has that you cannot serve both God and money, both money and God. Um, and that's an okay translation, but it's missing a really key detail there. Um, the word for money right there, back in this time, there were plenty of words for currency, but this word, um, the original language, it's mammon. It's not just money as currency, it's actually this god of money. This, um, uh, there's this painting. Uh, you can see here that uh, this painting of the god Mammon. And um, he's sitting on a, a blood red throne um, enshrined with skulls on top. And um, he's, he's well fed, uh, but he doesn't look happy. Mm. And yet, uh, like, like there's never enough. And he's got a, his lap is full of money bags. Um, he's got everything he needs, but down by the wayside, stripped naked and bare and dying, are these bodies. It's this God of money that constantly, um, yes, we can keep pursuing this money, but it ends up leaving us like those dead bodies mm. at the bottom. And Jesus is speaking to that. Um, mammon uh, is, the definition of mammon is wealth regarded as an evil influence 
a false object of worship and devotion. I mean, Jesus isn't just talking about um, trying to earn a living. Jesus is talking about worshiping money and stuff. Uh, the things that we want or have or being viewed a certain way, and then what we have to do in order to get that. And then continue on, verse 25. Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Um, don't worry about those things. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not much more valuable? Um, are you not much more valuable than they? The answer is yes, you are more valuable than, than anything in the eyes of God. Um, and then he says, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I mean, the answer is no, Right. I mean, we can worry. Worry doesn't gain us any more time. It actually robs us of our time. Uh, Leo Biscaglia said, um, Biscaglia said, uh, worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. We don't gain time by worrying. We lose time by worrying. That's right. We, we, Jeremy and I were talking this week about this sermon, and it got me thinking, like, there, there's this natural physical thing that happens when we worry and it, and it takes us away. Like we can be physically present where we're at, but be emotionally and spiritually mm. absent. Um, and, and so we're talking about being pulled away. And ironically, yeah. the, the word in the Greek for worry, the definition for, for worry in Greek, it literally means to be pulled into mm. parts, pulled away, torn. Uh, and we've all felt like that, right? Uh, corona has had me feeling like that constantly every day, feeling pulled apart and torn in everything that we do. Zoom calls, come on, I'm ready to no longer do <laughs> a Zoom call again. I want to be present, but my mind is in many different places because of worry. And the weight of worry pulls us away from worship. That's a huge point for us. When we're torn like this, we're called to worship and get back to the heart of God. But with worry, that weight keeps us from worshiping. And all these things that we worry about, um, and Jesus even goes right into it in the text, right? The things we wear mm -hmm. or what we're gonna eat. Th these things that we pursue and chase all the time. And what's fascinating is like some of the, these are basic needs though, right? Well, they are. But our, our obsession with all this other stuff of life and leads us feeling disintegrated. We feel pulled apart. I love that inside that we feel pulled apart, ripped apart because we're constantly stretched. And, and instead of all these parts pulling away, Jesus invites us to be integrated, to pull back together. And if we had a, a singular, singular focus, uh, an invitation to be integrated, to, to pull back together, to feel whole, and Jesus says the secret is to put the right thing at the center and everything gets drawn back to it. Our faith doesn't become another box that we put something in or another demand or another thing to check off our list. Our faith uh, in Christ, our trust in Jesus and his um, sacrifice for us, God's love and the way it defines who we are and the way we live our lives becomes the centering thing that all of um, our life comes together. It brings, makes us whole, it integrates us back together. And that's the invitation. And we were just reading this, but let's continue to walk through it. Verse 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans, for people that don't trust God, people that aren't people of faith, they trust after those things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. God already knows what your needs are, and you can trust him. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Let God reign in your life. And, and, and put first having right relationships with others and with him the way he defines it. Interact with others, love others, learn to live like Jesus and love like Jesus. And that integrates and pulls us together. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And Jesus says, God will take care of the rest. And all these things will be given to you as well. And the reality is, you might already be jumping back into the job space and, and back into the normal rhythms. And over the next couple of weeks, those things are going to happen. Ball games are going to start happening. School is going to kick back in the fall. And those rhythms will come. But the reality really is that the world is going to convince you to be selfish. When, when you roll up on that Facebook, Instagram, all of these areas, any television show right now, the news, you're going to be pulled into the convincing belief that you're supposed to be selfish. It's about I. But the king actually invites us to be selfless. 
That's the point to this text. Mm. Um, we were recently going through a study with some friends uh, about mm. the, the art of neighboring, and it was unique because I read this book a couple years ago, yeah. and it was phenomenal um, and very practical, which was really helpful. But now reading it, it's very different because when you're talking about the art of neighboring, caring for each other, being good people, there are a lot of practical things that we just aren't able to do right now. So how do you do that? And I loved one of the quotes in the book by uh, Dr. Kane Geisiger, um, an infectious dis uh, disease specialist. Um, it said this, right now we don't need churches to create a bunch of new programs. What we need is for the people who attend those churches to simply be good neighbors and to do good and to carry it out carefully and thoughtfully in their manners. Our heartbeat at this church is to live like Jesus and love like Jesus. That's why we're here, but it's also to, st to seek his kingdom and his righteousness every day and everywhere we go. That's right. So maybe this season um, where we're resetting globally, resetting the economy, resetting as a nation, um, resetting as a church, what if God is providing you and me, us, an opportunity to reset? To, to go about it and say, man, maybe we didn't choose to hit the reset button, but it was chosen for us. But as we have taken the time out and looked at our life, looking at the things that make us feel rushed and harried or um, all these other worries, that all these other concerns, all these other things that pull us apart in so many directions, to hit the reset on all of that and instead seek God, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, um, his rule and reign in my life, right relationships with others. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions just to think about as we close up in a moment here. Um, and just honest, nobody's hovering over your shoulder right now, at least I don't think they are. Um, but can, just as a moment of self-reflection, maybe you even want to close your eyes and just let these sink in for a moment. The question I asked at the very first uh, sermon at the beginning of the year when we, when we kind of restarted, um, all the way back in January was, is Jesus Christ the blazing center of your life? I mean, we asked it then, but I want to ask it again now. Is Jesus that the absolute center of your life? Is he the thing? Is he the one that brings all of your life together in harmony? Is he the one that all of your life wraps around and gets pulled together in integrity? And the second question, maybe another way to ask it, is are you seeking his kingdom or are you seeking yours? I mean, when you look at the decisions you make, uh, not just Sunday morning at 9.30 or at 11 o'clock or whatever, but as you look at the way you live your life and the way um, you, what's the center of your life, are you seeking his kingdom or are you seeking yours? And maybe the other half of that would be, are you depending on your own definition of rightness or on his? Are you seeking his righteousness or are you allowing yourself to define what is right in the eyes of God? You know, it reminds me of the parable in Matthew 13 and, and that this joy that we get to be part of the kingdom and allow the kingdom to advance is, is similar to this, this pearl. And it says in, in verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. We can have joy when we reset. And we're so grateful that we're able to do that as a church together. I love that. This guy finds something so valuable. He gives, he, he, he just surrenders everything to it. And he ends up finding joy. He says he's got joy in doing so. And we pray that you find joy, mm -hmm. um, friends. Love you guys. Go in peace. Yes.
the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better It doesn't take much for us to get our priorities mixed up and stop seeking the kingdom. But God loves us way too much to let us stay there. He offers a way back to him, even in a pandemic. If you'd like to take a next step in your relationship with Jesus, just click the link below and we'll be sure to reach out to you. Now, whether you've been part of our family for years or this is your first time, we'd love to connect with you this week. You can also stay connected with us throughout the week by filling out a connect card below or on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. We are Grace. Dot city. We've been grateful for your continued generosity while we wait to be back together in our new location. If you're already part of the family, you can continue to give online at our giving link below. So thanks for joining us today. And remember, grace lives here.